Hey everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a really interesting problem, called Vowel Spell Checker. It sounds simple, but there are a few tricky rules we'll need to handle carefully. Let's break it down together. So here's the deal. We're given a list of correct words called a word list, and another list of words to check, called queries. Our job is to go through each query and find the correct spelling from the word list, based on a specific set of rules. First up, the simplest rule. This has the highest priority. If the query we're looking at is a perfect, case-sensitive match for a word in our word list, we're done. That's our answer. For example, if kite is in the word list and our query is also kite, the answer is kite. Easy enough. Okay, but what if there's no exact match? We move on to rule number two. We check again, but this time, we ignore the case. So kite would match kite or kite. Now here's the important part. If there are multiple matches, like both kite and kite, we have to return the one that appeared first in the original word list. If we still don't have a match, we get to the trickiest rule, vowel errors. Here, we pretend all vowels are the same. We can imagine replacing every A, E, I, O, or U with a placeholder, like a star. So a query like Keddy would become K star T star. Then we'd look for a word in our list that produces the same pattern, like kite. And, just like the last rule, if multiple words match, we return the very first one from the list. This is the most important concept to remember. The order matters. You must check for an exact match first. Then, and only then do you check for a capitalization match. And finally, you check for vowel errors. If you find a capitalization match, you stop. You don't even look for vowel errors. If a query matches nothing at all, we just return an empty string. So how should we approach this? The first idea might be to take each query and then loop through the entire word list, checking our three rules one by one. But that would be incredibly slow if the lists are large. We'd be recalculating the lowercase and devoured versions of words in the word list again and again. There has to be a better way. And there is. The key is to do some work up front. We can pre-process the entire word list and store the results in hash maps or dictionaries in Python. This lets us look up words in constant time on average. We'll build three separate lookup tables, one for each of our spell checking rules. Our first lookup table is the easiest. We just take every word from the word list and put it into a set. A set is great because it gives us a super fast way to ask, is this exact word in here? This handles our highest priority rule. The second lookup handles capitalization. It'll be a map where the key is the lowercase version of a word, and the value is the original properly cased word. Now to handle that first one wins rule, we'll be careful. As we build this map, if we see a lowercase key that's already in there, we just ignore it. This way, only the very first version we saw gets stored. Our third and final lookup table is for the vowel errors. It's the same idea as the last one. The key will be the devout version of a word, and the value will be the original word. For example, K star T star would map to kite. And we use the exact same trick. We only add an entry if the key isn't already in the map, which automatically preserves the first match we find. All right. Here's what the complete solution looks like in Python. It might seem like a lot at first, but it's really just doing the two main steps we talked about. First, building the lookups, and second, using them to answer the queries. Let's break it down piece by piece. This first part is all about preparation. We create our three data structures, a set for perfect matches, a dictionary for capitalization, and another dictionary for vowel errors. Then, we loop through the original word list just one time. For each word, we calculate its lowercase and devoweled forms, and then we populate our dictionaries using that if not in check to make sure only the first occurrences are stored. Now that our lookups are ready, answering the queries is fast and follows our rules exactly. We loop through each query. First, we check the word's perfect set. If we find a match, we add it to our answer and move to the next query. If not, we check the word's cap dictionary. If that matches, we add its value and continue. If that also fails, we check the words vow dictionary. And if nothing works, we add an empty string. It's just a simple checklist. So how efficient is this approach? The time complexity is big O of C, where C is the total amount of text content across both the word list and the queries. This is because we have to read every character to build our maps and process the queries. The space complexity is also big O of C, because our lookup tables will grow in size based on the content of the word list. This is a great trade-off. We use a bit more memory to get a huge speed improvement. So to wrap it up, the big idea here was pre-computation. By building our hash maps ahead of time, we made the actual query processing incredibly fast. 
This problem really highlights how useful hash maps and sets are for any kind of lookup task. And most importantly, it shows that reading the rules carefully, especially about precedence, is the key to getting the right answer. If you enjoyed this problem and want to keep practicing, the learning doesn't have to stop here. I've organized all my video solutions into handy playlists. Whether you're looking to grind through more leap code easy, medium or hard problems, or you want to master a specific topic like sliding window or dynamic programming, I've got a playlist for you. It's the perfect way to focus your study sessions. Go to the playlist tab and find a playlist that fits your goals. Hope this leap code solution breakdown made sense. If it helped, give that like button a click, maybe subscribe for more, or drop a comment if you have questions. Make sure to turn on the notification bell so you know straight away when I upload a video because I upload videos daily. This channel doesn't make any money from sponsorships or ads yet, so if you're feeling generous, there's always the Boba Fund. Keep coding and I'll catch you in the next one.